So I have our project directory structure pulled up here in PyCharm, and let's open up grayscale histogram.py. We're gonna use matplotlib for plotting our nice little histogram plots, argparse for command line arguments, and OpenCV for our CV2, OpenCV bindings. We then have a single path here, which is image, the path to our input image. And we're gonna load that from disk and then compute it to grayscale. Because again, we wanna start slow. Let's start by computing the grayscale distribution of the input image and we'll work our way up to color. So at this point, we have our grayscale image and we're gonna pass it into the cv2.calc hist function. This function is going to compute our histogram. So first we pass in our single image as a list. We're gonna tell our cv2.calchis function that we want to compute the histogram for the zeroth channel of the image. So the zeroth channel is just the grayscale image itself. If this were an RGB image, we could pass in say a value of one, which would be like your green channel, value of two, which would be your red channel since we're using BGR ordering with OpenCV. But again, since we're working with just a grayscale image, this is the zeroth channel. If we had a mask, we could pass in the mask here. That way the histogram could be computed for just the masked region. We don't have a mask, so we'll set that to none. 256 here is the number of bins in the histogram. So since there are 256 possible pixel values in the image, that's what we're gonna pass in here because we wanna count the number of each individual pixel occurrence. And then here's the range of possible pixel values in the input image going from zero to 256. So once we call this function, we're gonna get our histogram back out. And what that histogram is gonna tell us is that along the x-axis, we'll have the bins zero to 256. And along the y-axis, we're gonna plot the number of times each of those pixel intensities occurs. And that's best explained visually. So let's plot this. We'll create a figure and we'll display our grayscale image. And then we're gonna set the title, which is our grayscale histogram. We're gonna plot along the x-axis the bins along the y-axis will be the number of pixels for each of those bins. We'll plot the histogram and then limit any values to zero to 256. That way we could visualize it nice and cleanly on the plot. And we're also gonna look at the normalized histogram. So keep in mind what we're doing here is plotting raw pixel intensities of the image. So if our image is 256 by 256, well, that means, and just to demonstrate this to you, 256 by 256 in a grayscale image, that means we're gonna have 65,536 pixels inside our input image that are added to that histogram that are binned to each of the individual bins. Now, let's say I took this exact same 256 by 256 image and I resized it to 32 by 32. Now there's only 1024 pixels in that input image, but the actual image contents are effectively identical. All I've done is resize the image. I've done nothing else. If we were to compare these two histograms, they would look wildly different due to the fact that this particular histogram has so many pixel intensities in it, while this one comparatively is very, very small. But realistically, they should have effectively the same histogram because the contents are the same. So how do you handle that? That is handled by histogram normalization. So what we do is we sum up all values of the histogram and then divide each bin by that sum. So for this original image, we would sum up all the pixel values, which is 65,536, and divide each of the bins by this value. And for a 32 by 32 image, we loop over the number of bins and divide the value by 1024. Therefore, all bin values, when you sum all of them together, they're gonna add up to one. That's essentially what a normalized histogram is. So from there, we plot our normalized histogram and display it. Let's see this in action, because once you see histograms visually, it becomes a lot more intuitive to understand. So I'm gonna copy and paste the usage here. And here in the first figure, this is our input image. It's our beach image that has been converted to grayscale. And then I compute the grayscale histogram. So here is the plot of the, the histogram. You can see probably around bin 125, there's a large spike of pixel values. About bin 75, there's a large spike. And then on the tail ends, there's not many dark pixels. And there's not many super light pixels either. They all kind of fall into this mid range. Now let's look at the normalized histogram. The distribution is identical, right? We have the same peaks. We have the same valleys, same peaks, same valleys. 
and it bottoms out the same. So the histogram, these two histograms look identical. What's different though is along your y-axis. This tells you the number, the raw integer counts for each bin. This one, on the other hand, gives you a percentage. Now, typically, when we're comparing histograms, when we're working with histograms, you're, you're going to work with the normalized, the percentage of pixel values that fall into a certain bin. And the reason you do that is for, for what I stated earlier. If there are slight adjustments to input images, such as size, scaling, the contents are effectively the same, right? So if you try to compare histograms for different images for that have identical contents but different sizes, well, you're not going to be able to do that with raw pixel intensities because by definition, a smaller image is going to have less pixels in it. But if you normalize it, you're going to, these, these histograms are directly, so that's why you'll see normalized histograms used often.